Now finally the last thing we'll see here now we have seen some of the basic features first thing we started with AS number and then IGP routing BGP features and this is what we discussed just now the path vector behavior and then the loop prevention mechanism here now the last thing we will see in this video is when is BGP is more appropriate to use now you may you may come into a situation like you are running an organization and in your organization probably you are running BGP so if you are running a big size organization you might be running BGP so BGP is uh, typically used by big size organizations for path manipulations so that they can exchange the route from service forwarder now first we need to understand when it is more appropriate to use BGP so let's say I decided to use BGP so I should decide first whether I can use or I cannot use or uh, is it uh, is it required to use so the first condition to use BGP is you should be a service forwarder so if I am the service forwarder let's say I'm working for any service forwarder network then service forwarder is going to provide services to many customers which means he's going to connect many customers to different autonomous system numbers so to exchange the information between these uh, multiple autonomous system numbers it becomes mandatory for the service forwarder to run BGP because BGP is the only protocol designed to exchange the routes between the multiple A's and it can do some path manipulations so it is specially designed for that so the entire internet so whatever the network we say the biggest network of the world internet runs BGP so internet is maintained by service forwarder so service forwarders connect to each other and they maintain the biggest network now if you want to access internet let's say I'm going to say yahoo.com when my request reaches my ISP and from the ISP we say it is going to internet so internet is a public network where everyone is connected so which means this ISP is going to maintain where is your Yahoo server and it's going to maintain the route of the Yahoo server and the Yahoo server is somewhere in a different location maybe a different company a different organization so it's going to send a request to Yahoo server and get the reply and finally send it to our ears so which means if you are a service forwarder then definitely you need to maintain the routes of different autonomous systems or different each and everything you need to maintain the routes so this can be done by using a BGP protocol because in this scenarios we are not going to use uh, any of the IGP protocols because IGP protocols are only designed within the same autonomous system number but when you talk about internet we are moving between different AS to reach Yahoo server and coming back so maybe I'm just uh, moving around multiple AS probably more than five six AS to reach that particular Yahoo server so that's the first case if you're running ISP if you are ISP then it becomes mandatory for you to run BGP protocol okay so in case if I'm not an ISP let's say my company decides to run BGP even though it's not an ISP now it is really recommended if you have a multiple autonomous systems and you are connecting to multiple layers we call as multi homing environment and where you need to do some path manipulations so let me take one simple scenario for understanding this second point when BGP is more appropriate to use okay so I got a diagram here I'm going to keep on diagram let's say this is my organization which is connecting to uh, I got many routers plenty of routers here okay so now if your organization is just connecting to your ISP and from there we are connecting to internet so we just got only one one connection to ISP in that case it's really not recommended to use BGP because normally what we do is to access internet we configure a default route so towards ISP and from ISP we configure a static route and we redistribute that distributed into your IGP and you will simply exchange the route without any problem this is one common scenario where uh, where we use this is the most common scenario without BGP so especially in a small size networks medium size networks we generally follow this scenario where we have some IGP protocol running probably your EHRP OSPF or any of the protocols and we have a default route pointing to ISP and then we are redistributing the static route into into our IGP protocols and we we are just allowing all the routers in my is accessing the internet via the same ISP so we call this as single homing environment single home where you have a single exit path 
towards the service forwarder and we just have only one exit path so in this case we it's not really recommended to use BGP but let's say this is my organization it's very big organization I got plenty of routers in my organization autonomous systems and I got multiple exit paths probably I'm connecting to two service providers ISP1 and I'm connecting to another service port ISP2 so maybe for redundancy I have gone with multiple service providers from there I'm going to access my internet or probably I'm going to access the resources between different organizations this is my ABC organization so we call this as multi homing environment so now you got multiple exit paths from two different AS. Now here also you can try the same thing like just a default route, primary default route backup and you can use a normal IGP metric to reach any one of this but what I can do is in this type of scenarios I can use BGP to do some path manipulations like what I can do is I can say that some of the traffic should use this route let's say in my production network I got 10 dot network I got 20 dot network I got 30 dot network and I got 40 dot network so I can I can do some path manipulation such that this 10 dot network and 20 dot network should use this route to go outside my autonomous system numbers and then I can tell the remaining two networks to go from this route so we call this as path manipulation now this is something what BGP is going to provide you so if you want to do something like this then you can use BGP and you can install the routes. So now we are not going to use a default route here. We are just trying to exchange the routes from the service provider. And even I'm also running BGP and the service provider also run BGP. And I'm going to install all the routes of service provider or all the routes coming from service provider into my BGP routing table. So especially some of the big size organizations go with these things. We call this as multi-homing environment where you have a multiple exit paths and we are going to do some path manipulations so this is the next case where we can uh, use BGP so more in detail I'm getting into that like the different types of connections to ISP and the different types of configurations I'm getting in detail about that in my next video so here I'm just trying to figure out uh, when it is more appropriate to use BGP so if you are a service provider it becomes mandatory for you to use BGP and if you are not a service provider if you are running a company has, when you have a multi homing environment and you want to do some path manipulation for the traffic which is entering to your AS or leaving to AS so in this type of scenarios I can use BGP and when it is not recommended to use BGP if you are running a single homing environment like if you remember just I, I took one more example remember here this for example where uh, my IS is just connecting to one connection to one of the ISP and there is only one exit path so here it's really not required to use BGP because you just simply configure a default route towards the service provider because anyway you have one route so we don't really need to do any path manipulations so it's really not recommended to use BGP in this type of scenarios and if you have a lack of resources because you know if you are running BGP in your production network means you are going to run uh, you are going to run the BGP and you are going to install all the routes of internet probably coming from service provider which means you should have a very high end devices probably your core routers to run to maintain such a big routing table and to process it and also if you have a limited understanding of BGP if you are really not sure how the BGP behaves how the BGP selects the best path or how it's going to work troubleshooting BGP so it's really not recommended to use BGP so that is something what uh, these are some of the things some of the points which is recommended to keep in mind when it is more appropriate and when it is not appropriate to use BGP so finally we have seen some of the basic concepts of BGP here so initially we started with autonomous system number what is autonomous system number it's a number which identify an organization and then we have seen the basic differences between IGP and BGP and some of the basic features later on and we have seen the loop prevention mechanism the default loop prevention mechanism in the BGP is whenever any route is coming into is getting into the AS it will check if it sees its own AS number inside that it's not going to install that route and then finally we have seen when to use and when not to use BGP 
so probably in our next video we'll see some more getting into some more in details about the bgp configurations